Since Unreal added these new cloner and effector tools in the 5.4 update, I've been wanting to figure out how do I get more control over the materials and the look and feel of different kinds of cloner setups. In this video, I'm just gonna show you a few different setups of what I've learned so far. Hopefully it's useful and let's get started. Okay, so let's get started. I'm in Unreal Engine 5.4.1 and I have this basic cloner setup that's literally just a grid cloner with a box in it. So the first material that I want to make is just a simple gradient material that covers the whole cloner setup or all the cloner objects. So what I mean is the bottom brick kind of starting from blue and then fading all the way up to white or whatever color you want. So just a gradient that covers the whole uh, setup. A lot of this will have the same stuff used in my previous gradient tutorial, so definitely check that out. So I'm just gonna jump into my tutorial folder, create a new material and I will call it M underscore brick gradient. Open that up. So like I mentioned before, this is a very similar setup to the previous gradient tutorial I made. And there are two main things that we need to use. One is the particle position. And I'll explain why we want the particle position in a second. And then the second one is the object position. So the reason I am using a particle position is because the cloner in the new Unreal Engine Motion graphics tools is built off of the Niagara system. So all these little boxes or geometries that it clones are actually recognized as particles, which is really useful because it means in the material node editor, we can now use the particle nodes to drive the material of a cloner setup. Now, the first thing I wanna do is, obviously I'm getting the particle position and I want to, I want my gradient to go from the bottom to the top, which is in the Z direction. So to do that, we need to mask out the Z channel. And the Z is the blue channel. So if I just go out of or into out of game view, you'll notice here in the bottom left, Z is blue and they correspond with RGB. So to do that, I'm just going to move my object position out of the way for now, grab my particle position, do a component mask and only get, uh, only get the B channel. And then I'm just looking at my reference here on the right, which is my own tutorial actually, funnily enough. Get the sub, nope, not the subtract. Get the add node. So I'm gonna hold A and click, or you can just type add. Get the add node, and then I want to get the divide node. Plug that guy in. The next thing I wanna get is the power node. We're almost done here, don't worry. I'll explain it in a sec, although I explain a lot more in my actual grading tutorial. Uh, and then at the end, a clamp node. So just gonna grab all of these, hit Q, so they're all aligned. And now let's add some parameters to build into this. And I would actually, what I would do is make a material function out of this, which I kind of have. If I go to my materials real quick, material functions, gradient. You can see I've literally just done this already in a material function, but I just wanna make this from scratch for you guys just in this tutorial. Delete that for now. It's way more efficient to do that, by the way. So first scalar parameter, I'm gonna hold S and click, which again is the same as making a constant and then right clicking and convert to parameter. A constant is just this. So just a shortcut. I'm gonna call this gradient offset. Plug that in, make another scalar parameter. So S and click, call this gradient scale. Plug that in and then S and click and then make a gradient power. And you'll know what this means soon, but it's kind of like the bias of the gradient. So just move these that way a bit. We've got our clamp, cool. Now we just add our two colors. So I'm gonna hold V and click for a vector parameter, V and click. This is the same thing as a constant for vector. And then you just make it a parameter. So I'm gonna call this color one and color two. And I'm just pressing F2 to rename. So I'll just make color two white. And then we want to get a lerp or a linear interpolate. So I'm gonna hold L and click. 
the same as typing linear interpolate. I don't know if I should keep repeating myself with these, but in case new people watch this video, that's kind of why I'm repeating these shortcuts and things again. Let me know if it's annoying. Let's drag our clamp into the alpha, color one into A and color two into B. So these will be our two colors and the alpha will be our mask between the two colors, which will be a gradient. Uh, so for the default values, gradient offset zero is fine. Let's do a gradient scale of five and then gradient power of one as our defaults. And this will be based on world coordinates, which you'll see in a second. So save. And now I'm pretty sure, yep, we just drag this into our base color. So I'll use this in a sec. I'll just show you why we're about to use it. So I'll hit apply and save. And then let me go back to this folder, brick gradient. I'm gonna create a material instance and call it MI brick gradient simple. Sorry, I should also call this simple. You've got all of that named. And because the cloner and stuff is a little bit buggy still, I'm going to drag my brick, which is this box out and then drag my material on it and then drag it back into the cloner. And the reason I'm doing that is because the material does not update if I just do it now. So you always have to kind of reset it. Okay, cool. So now you can see, I was worried for a sec that it wasn't working. This is our gradient. It's just very harsh right now. So let me make the scale maybe something like 90 and then offset it down so the black tiles at the bottom. That should be good. And then the gradient power, you'll see biases it towards either the dark side, which is at the bottom, or the white side, which is at the top. So maybe I'll make this like 85 on the scale and then change my gradient power to like a 1.3 maybe. And then I'm just gonna change my color one, which is the black to a blue and then hit save. Cool. Now we have a gradient moving along our entire collection of clones. Now, the reason that we have this object position is because of this. So say I select my cloner right here and I move it, you'll notice the gradient does not stick to it because the gradient right now is based on the world coordinates and it isn't referencing our cloner at the moment. It's only referencing our geometry that is the child. So what we need to do is get our object position. Let's make some space here. Get our object position and then get a subtract, which is why I was going to get it earlier, but I just wanted to explain why I got it. Get a subtract. And then let's copy this node or duplicate it. So control D to duplicate, drag that in here, select these guys, press Q and then drag our mask of the particle in there, object in there. And then the subtract goes into the add. So what we're doing is we are subtract subtracting our object position from the particle position. And the object in this case is the parent, which is the cloner. So we want to subtract that position from our particle, which means it'll always stick to it. And we are masking it again because again, we only care about the Z direction. If you did want to do a gradient facing the other direction, you could just change this to red or green, by the way, super simple. So now we hit apply and it might change our values. Yeah, because that'll affect our offset amount. So now if we put our offset at zero and let me change my gradient scale back to five, you'll see zero is like halfway. So the origin of our object is like the zero point. So now we can move this up or down. So I'll make this back to 85, make this maybe negative on a 50. So yeah, a really simple gradient setup that sticks to your object. So if I now move our cloner, it moves with our object. You'll see our blue gradients is stuck to it. Let's move on to the next one. So now the next thing we'll do is add a bit more complexity and mix in some masks and add like these little metallic little flecks and specks. And I'm just going to show you how you would do that as well as mask the blue gradient with some noise that you can then animate or like move dynamically. Let me just show you what I mean. So kind of like this, where you have a slider that you can control things with and then also change the color of the metal 
that is behind it as well. Okay, so first thing we'll do is let's copy the simple gradient material we made just so we don't mess around with it too much. And then I'm just gonna call it, you could call it complex or I'll just call it complex, whatever. And then make a material instance, MI brick gradient complex. Let's drag that onto our cloner object. And then to reset it, drag it out of the cloner and then back onto it. Cool, I'm just gonna fix up the settings. Okay, so this is where we left off. Now, let's jump into this material bring it over here. First things first, let's just group these together. And then like I said, I would probably make this, uh, honestly, this whole thing into a function, a material function, so that you can just drag it into any project. But just for visual clarity's sake. So this will be gradient, drag this out. Now the next thing we want to add is a masking component for the metallic texture. So let's first, let's let's first apply the texture actually. So I've got this nice speckly, fleckly, whatever you wanna call it, texture from Vincent Schwenk, shout out Vincent. So it's just this right here. What I'm gonna do is first, I know I need to one, I need to invert it. So I'm gonna one minus it. And then let's just plug it into the metallic. Why'd I say that word? Into the metallic. And then hit apply and save. Now if I go up close, you will see I now have this like nice metallic map on it. Adds a little detail. But what if I wanted it to fade away as it got to the white? So I kind of wanted more specs around the blue and less around the white. So to mask that, we can use the same gradient that we just made. However, remember for a mask, it's looking for black and white values or brightness values of a map. So this value thing right here, but clearly we change the color of it to blue. So what if you're using pink and red at different brightnesses, you can't use that as a map as a mask, sorry. So we kind of need to create a black and white version of our gradient. So to do that, very simple. I know that might not make sense, but all we gotta do is drag out from this guy into another linear, linear interpolate. This guy right here. Let me hold control and drag to put that into the alpha. And now I'm just gonna hold three and click to make a black and then another three and click to make a white. So there's two colors. We don't need to make these parameters because we're not gonna be changing these in our material instance. And from memory, I think the black goes into B and the white goes into A. Yep, so now what all we need to do is plug this guy into a lerp. Let me drag this out. Plug this guy into the B. And I think grab our mask, plug that into the alpha and then drag this guy into the metallic. So we are now masking our texture with our gradient that we've set up. And just to make that super clear, let's now select these guys and group it. And I'm pressing C to group it by the way, or adding a comment, so mask. So we can now use this mask to plug into other things, which we will do in a second. So now if I hit apply and save, You'll see here at the bottom, we still have our little specs giving off those highlights. Gotta have my creatine, which I've already done. <laughs> and then at the top, you'll see there are no specs. And we kind of, you can see it fading here. So we've now faded out our metallic map the same amount as our gradient. And obviously you can just plug in your own gradient values if you did want to do that. Uh, let me bring this guy back up. Maybe you don't have to use these exact values. You could create a new mask one up here if you want, but I'm just gonna keep it all the same. Now, how do we add some color to it? Or should we add some noise first maybe? Let's add some noise because how this happened was I liked having the specs there, but it seemed too uniform. So I wanted to break it up with a noise pattern. To do that, very, very easy. Just right click, type in noise. Hit enter. Uh, I'm not gonna explain it too much, but check out my noise tutorial if you want to learn about some of these values here and how I used them. These are the settings that I use. So I made the scale 0.01. I made the levels two and 
I think that is about it. And then just grab an add node. So A and click, drag this into B, drag the inverted map into A and then drag this into B. So we're just replacing our metallic map with that. The noise will blend over the white values, I presume. So if we hit apply, you can now see it's broken up with the noise map, which kind of gives, it's like it gets more metallic around those areas. However, it is currently black. So we need a, a color for that material. Now, how do we add the color? So first I'm just gonna quickly comment this, call it metalness plus noise and then I realize we also just need to I'm just gonna put a value of like 0.2 in our roughness so that it's not as rough and it's a bit more shiny let me see how that looks cool so now what was my roughness before oh 0.3 so I'll just change it to 0.3 and now okay sorry let's stay on track to add a color I'm going to make a new vector parameter so hold V and click gonna call this metal color and then let's just make this like a gold and then now we just got to layer everything together so first let's get a multiply node so hold M and click and now we're going to put our mask into B and our metal color into A because this will now, by multiplying it, take over the darker values. So it'll overlay that because we are multiplying it. You can also look into other blend modes. If you just right click and type blend, you can use whatever blend mode you like. I'm just gonna use the multiply. And then we want to get another multiply node, drag the original one into A, and then get our metallic, metal, metallic map. I don't know why that's hard to say. Put that into B make a little more room. And then the final thing we want to add is because we still need to blend it with our color gradient. So this is just our mask gradient. We need to now blend it with our color gradient and I'm gonna do an add node for that. So we now put this into the A and then I'm pretty sure, yep, our lerp into the B. And now we're just going to replace this and then hit apply. Boom, so now we've got a bit of this gold color coming through where the darker patches were. So pretty cool. And if I just open up the material, let me enable this. You can see now we can adjust the color of that metal. And then we can also adjust the gradient power. Like we can bias it towards the noise. We can change the offset of it like the noise is growing. We can also change the gradient scale. So all of these things, super cool and useful to do to create some certain effects of like, you know, a bleeding kind of ble like color bleed sort of effect that you could do as well as other things or over a bunch of clone geometry. You can skip past this if you like, but just to show you, the first multiply is doing this. So this is getting our metal color in there. Our second multiply is doing this. This should be getting our metallic map. Yeah, so this is getting our metallic and noise map overlaid onto that. And then the add, is getting rid of this black and overlaying our color gradient into it. So now the final add goes into base and then we hit apply. So hopefully now you know what three of these uh, blending kind of nodes are doing and you can fine tune them, fine -tune them yourself and do whatever kind of blending that you wanna do. Let's move on. <laughs> So the next material we're gonna make is sort of this two-tone random color application vibe. And then we're also gonna look into having this like mask kind of cover it as well. And you can have control over that mask if you did want to. But yeah, we're gonna use a radial gradient as well as you can change the harshness of it. So if you wanted it to like come in like that, you could do that as well. And then of course you can also change the intensity or the contrast of the two-tone vibe. I don't know why I said vibe. Anyway, let's make this. Okay, so for this one, let's make a fresh material. Let's go to right click material, M underscore two-tone. And then we're also gonna add that gradient fall off. And then I forgot we gotta add M underscore brick two-tone. 
Now let's quickly also just make an instance, mi underscore brick to tone. And then just drag it onto our brick, take it out of the cloner, drag it back into the cloner. Cool, let's reset, save. We are now ready to go. So let's just first set up that two-tone look because it's really easy to do. Again, we'll go to the particle nodes and let's go type in particle random. And then if I just plug this into the base color, you can already see what it'll do. Boom, so it's assigned a random value from white to black onto each of our clones, randomly scattered. And then of course, once we have these values, you can now linear interpolate between them. So L and click, let's make this our mask and then make two colors. So hold V and click color one, and then V and click color two. And then I'm just gonna make this like a pale baby blue vibe. And then color one can be like a super saturated, super saturated blue, maybe around there. And then just drag that into A. I don't know why this window is so small. Drag that into B and then this can override our base color and then we hit apply. So now we have that two tone look, so super easy. Now what if we wanted to control the contrast of this map? Because right now we don't have much control over that. Well, a cool node that I found during this whole experimentation is smooth, smooth curve. Yeah, this also does a similar thing. So you know what, let's just try this because I haven't really used it. So let's now, we have a power. So contrast power, drag that into this. By the way, you still can use this setup if you want, just play around with the values and you'll kind of get an idea. But this is sort of an easier contrast thing we can do. Let's just drag this into here and then this into base color and let's see what it does. And now let me open up, there it is. So you can see you're really just changing and you can go into the negative values as well. You're just changing the amount of contrast based on the default value. So I think I should make the default value one. Sorry, one, cool. And then this can be one. So now if we plug this into the alpha and then this into the base color, we should have simple contrast controls over our blues. So just doing this or doing this. Yeah, nice. So that's a simple contrast slider that we can use for our blues. There's a bunch of other things. You can just get a cheap contrast that does kind of like similar things, like it says, pulling in edges in Photoshop levels tool. There's a bunch of other things. You could also blend, do a blend overlay. So it's like doing an overlay blend mode in Photoshop. So just gonna put this into a contrast group. And now let's do the radial gradient. So let's type in gradient, get the radial gradient exponential. And now let's plug some stuff into this. So for the UVs, we want the particle position because we want the UVs of our particles. Then the next thing we need is the center position, which if you remember from the first material we made is our object position because it is the position of the cloner or the parent. Object position will be our center position and then radius, let's promote that to a parameter, density, Let's promote that to a parameter. So the density will be the fall off of our ray of our radial gradient. So let's set that to like a two. And then we don't need an invert density if you don't want it, but we may as well make one. So the default, cool. And then the default for this is two. And I know it wasn't really a great, a radial thing in the example, but this is kind of what worked the best for the effect I was after. Now to blend these together, I think all we need is a multiply drag that into B, drag this into A, and then this goes into the lerp and hit apply. And now let's go to our material instance, go to the radius. Yeah, so you'll see as we increase it, like the circle gets bigger and it starts from the center because we gave it our center point, which was the object position. And if you really wanna see what this is doing in the back end, you can just plug this straight into base color and you can see here, this it's like a, almost like a mask going through, which is why we then multiply it with our contrast. So then let's plug that in. So that should bring in our random values. Yep, so that brings in our random values. And then we need our color to go on top of that. So we use this black and white texture as a mask for our color. That goes into base, hit apply, and then boom. 
So hopefully that kind of gives you an actual explanation of what each node is doing so that you can make some custom setups yourself. Okay, so there's another one, one of the last, we're nearly done. There's another cool variation of this that I thought was just aesthetically quite nice. So let's just make another new material. I'll just call it M underscore brick random because I don't know what else to call it. Bring this guy over. Really simple setup. So let's just first make a material instance. M I brick random. Apply it to our brick. Drag it out, drag it back in to reset it, hit save. Make sure you're always hitting save because this thing crashes a lot, especially if you hit that guy. Anyway, let's give this a color. So base color, make it white. I'm gonna make the default like a quite a light gray, almost a white. And what I thought would be a cool idea is assigning random metallic values to these guys because it just looks nice. <laughs> so let me type in particle random and then drag on a make an S curve, which we used before for the contrast, bring that guy in, then power. So this can be contrast. I'm holding S and clicking by the way, just to keep that in mind. Leave that on one, boom, plug this into metallic and then what else? I think that's about it. Let's see how that looks. Why is that not working? I might need to reset it again. Force update. Let's drag it back out, drag it back in. Oh, there we go, cool. So it is working. It's just, there's not much contrast right now. So what we can do is open up our instance again and then just up the contrast curves. And now you can see some are getting more metallic and some are not. However, at the moment, we also need to make our metallic ones more shiny. So to do that, we can just drag out of this value here, the S curve, go into a one minus, and then drag that into our roughness. So this means everything that has a high metallic value will be more rough. I mean, no, will be less rough, will be more shiny. So you can see here, the more metallic cubes are the more chrome-like ones. And I thought that was a cool look. So I have these five different bricks and I have this Quixel material applied to it, this concrete wall material, and I have five different instances of that material on each brick and I've just changed the positioning of the texture on each of them. Uh, I'll explain a bit more on that in a sec, but now let's put this in my cloner. Cool, and now I have this cloner. But currently you can tell the color tone is very uniform in all of it. So we can use the same technique that we've been doing and add some variation to the tint. And to do that, let me just grab my Quixel material. I've gone into the master material and duplicated it. So what you can do is go into your Quixel material instance, find the master material, and then you can like duplicate it. And I've edited the master material and you can see I've used a particle random that goes into a blend overlay and I'm blending a black color and then that goes into a lerp. And as we know, what a lerp does is it uses an alpha or a mask to blend between the A and B inputs. So the A input is the random particle color and the B input is the actual texture. And then I've just put that into a switch parameter. So that means I can turn it on and off if I want to. And I've made this a parameter so I can change the color of the tint as well. And if you see, let me just enable this. Uh, if I go to zero, you should be able to tell here if I turn it on and off. You can see a few of those guys changing up the top. And then if I just turn it on for all of them, boom, tint amount, tint amount. And then, cause the default is 0.1. Now you can see there's actually a bit of color variation on the bricks themselves. So this could be really useful for tile setups, brick setups like this, where you just want a bit of color variation. And I actually originally wanted to make this tutorial to have random texture offset on each particle. And I did achieve that, but then the problem was I was not able to stop the texture from sliding if the particle moved. Like I couldn't get the texture to stick to each particle like how we did with the gradient. 
Not sure why. I'm still trying to figure that out and I will make a tutorial once I do figure that out. If any of you know, please let me know, let me know in the comments. But again, let me just bring up that setup. Very simple. It's just this and this. So just plug your albedo into a lerp, do all the multiplication stuff with the particle random. And you can see here, I've got the variation tint. And then I've also got a checkbox if I want the variation to be enabled or not. So that's what this switch parameter does. And that is a switch parameter. So that's one of these guys. So a really useful way to use the particle node to randomize the tinting of clones. Now, another thing you'll notice is in this video or in this sequence, I've got the gradient radial thing coming in and out like pulsing. So if you want to animate your keyframes, check out my animating keyframes tutorial. I just use a material parameter collection and then plug this into the main material that we then keyframe. So check out that video if you wanna learn how to do that. And I'm also thinking of making a video on adjusting bricks, kind of blinking around and all the other stuff you saw in the intro video. So let me know if you're interested in that and I'll make a video on it. I think I want to, cause it's a pretty fun one as well as stuff like this. So catch you in the next one. Have a good one. Peace.